we, we pretty much worked our way from the back forward through the motorcycle, and now it's uh, to the front end, which is kind of the fun stuff. There's a lot of things going on here. We're going to uh, recondition the forks, get the brakes working properly as best they can at least. Uh, we'll be going through the instruments, sorting out all this wiring, get rid of all this funky stuff from that weird fairing that was on there, change the bars, a lot of things. But what we'll do is go straight in and replace the steering head bearings first and then start building it back out from there. So let's get going. I'm going to start by removing the front wheel. And now before proceeding, I'm going to put the front axle back in again. And this is because we're going to have to loosen some fasteners here. And I don't want to put any undue stress on the fork brace. And so this will just kind of help keep everything lined up while I'm wrenching on the front end. Now we can go ahead and take the caliper off, get rid of all the brake parts here. There's a plug down underneath, it takes a 19 millimeter wrench to remove it. And then you take uh, any M8 bolt just what you might have laying around and screw that in to this pin and you can see how that's an eccentric and when I turn that pin you see how the caliper moves so that comes in later when we go to adjust the brakes later on but this just pulls straight out like so you're just using the bolt as a tool to remove it and now that caliper is loose so I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of these bits off here Put this away for later on, we'll get back to that. And off comes the fender. Okay, so first I'm gonna loosen these clamps here, the fork gators. This one I don't even bother with, it's broken. <laughs> All right, and then underneath here, there's a couple of rubber plugs. They're usually pretty beat like this one is, but they're included with our fork seal or fork rebuild kits. You get a set of these new plugs with that. And then you see that I've got a pan here because it's gonna leak a little bit of oil. Up in the middle of the, of the uh, bolt, which is the, basically the, the fork damping rod, there is a, you need a four millimeter Allen to stick in there and a 13. One of these offset wrenches works great for this particular job. You just then loosen and remove the nut. And there's a, also a wave washer that comes out of there too. Okay, I got those loose. I'm going to go ahead and take this fender brace off because I'm going to want to clean all that up, get it out of the way, and take the fork legs off. Oh, and note the way this comes off. You see how there's a radius, the higher end is to the front. You could also take a little sharpie or something and make a little arrow on there so you know which way, but it's directional. This one is cracked, this one is broken, so they're gonna get replaced, but even so, even if they were in good condition, they're not correct for the bike. Th these are slash five boots. I don't know, they got put on there at some point. The difference is there's 13 ribs on these. The slash six and later models take 11 ribs. Just a little detail. We have both, both of them available though. Before I go too much further with the disassembly, I'm going to mark the fork tubes. 
there is a wear pattern established on the fork tubes and so it's rather important that they go back in the same position that they came out and in the same side. And so a good way to do it is just with a permanent marker like a Sharpie like this. And um, what I do is right at the split here, just make a nice thick line that's centered on there. And then on this one, make a nice thick line and turn it into an L. Now there's no doubt about where it goes. We're going to be begin by re removing the handlebars entirely because I'm going to be replacing them. We want to put a little bit lower bars on there and uh, change out a lot of the parts on here. So I'm just going to take the bars off. You do, don't really have to do that, not, uh, completely remove them in other words. You could just take the clamps off and like lay the bars down onto the frame here and just get everything sort of out of the way. It's just a little shortcut, but um, I'm going to just take them off entirely take the switches off and the whole thing. So when you take the cables out, always note how they routed. I kind of know it, but you just want to pay attention. Maybe take a picture or two. If you're in doubt later on, you can always refer back to it. It's a little bit tedious, but you just have to unscrew these nuts on the bottom side of the triple clamp. And one more thing here is to remove the clutch switch. So you just have to loosen the uh, clutch adjuster. If you were just, if you weren't taking the handlebars off, you wouldn't have to do that. Um, I kind of want to go through everything, so I'm going to take it off. And to do so, you have to remove the clutch adjustment screw, and then you'll find that there's a little Phillips screw down inside there behind the wires. You have to reach in there and get that screw out of there. And then the clutch switch can be removed. There we go. This bike has a steering damper, so I'm gonna take that off as a next step. I'm going to take the steering damper off. This is the same system that's used on the shifter linkages on many models. It's just a clip like this. You kind of have to grab one end of it and sort of pivot it out. You would move it out like that. It looks like this little wire clip. That's it. And then this will snap off. There's one down there too. We can just leave that there for now. Take these two screws out, the steering damper mechanism will come out. Or actually, it's, not the, it's the mechanism for adjusting the position of the steering damper. We'll look at that when we put it back together again. And you just pull that rod straight out the bottom, a little bushing on top. Okay, I'm gonna get those instruments out of the way next. With these three bolts here, you don't need to remove them entirely. Just have to loosen them. It's like a, like a bayonet slip fitting, essentially. Just get them a bit loose. And then we'll unscrew the cables. This one has both a tachometer and a speedometer cable. Of course, later models with electronic tacks don't have a 
tachometer cable, but this one has both. Okay, with the cables off of the bolts loose, now you can just simply slide the instrument off and sort of carefully position it in such a way that you can get to the screw on the back here. It should have been a Phillips, but it's not. No problem. And then you have to very carefully sort of rock this plug out. And sometimes they're damaged, corroded, and one of the really cool parts we carry from Siebenrock is the replacement um, connector plug. So it's really easy to replace. It's not something that's available from BMW. Normally you'd have to buy the whole wiring harness, but if you've got a plug that's messed up, we've got a great solution for that. Also, a lot of stuff we've got to, for the instruments, but that'll be down the road. We're just going to keep going on this steering head bearing thing. So these older bikes have these little uh, caps like you see here with the two holes. And for that, really, you need one of these pin wrenches. It was originally supplied with the tool kit. Hopefully you have one. Otherwise, I think they're still available from BMW. And by the way, these caps, we have new replacements in the chrome plated, like the original BMW, and also now in stainless steel. Pretty cool. Okay, so now with a 36 millimeter socket, I'm gonna try to break these three fasteners loose here. Not so bad. Another cool product you'll find on our website is replacement uh, center nut. We have them both with and without the hole in stainless steel, polished stainless. They look really nice. Okay, it'll pop up. Looks like somebody put some PVC spacers in here at one point in time to increase the spring preload. You don't have to take the fork springs out right now, but I'm going to go ahead and do so. All right, now this top clamp comes off as easy as that. I'm going to go ahead and just get this headlight out of the way. Okay, we can just kind of let that dangle there and take these headlight ears off. We have to do some wiring in here later on because these have been kind of mangled. So we can just kind of let the headlight bucket hang like that. And now we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. At this point, I'm gonna remove the fork tubes. So loosen the pinch bolts. And sometimes you'll get lucky and they'll come out, but it's not oftentimes the case. So what we do is take this bolt out all the way. And then you can take a screwdriver and put it in the wedge. And I do it from the bottom because if I do mar the aluminum at all, at least it won't show, but I'm of course gonna be super careful not to do so. And so we just sit the screwdriver right in the slot there. Give it just enough of a tap to spread it ever so slightly to allow you to remove the, the fork tube. Perfect. And of course we marked it and make sure when you go to clean it, you don't accidentally rub, rub off the mark. You can clearly feel the, the notchiness in the bearings. I mean, there's, just look at the bike. There's no doubt that they need to be replaced, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and take it out and have a closer look. So the same tool we used for taking those caps off is this, the other end of it is this uh, hook wrench. 
and that's the one that you need to remove this nut here. It's kind of buggered, so it's coming off a little hard. And notice how the nut comes off. It has sort of a raised edge on one side, where it's flat on the other. The raised edge is the one that goes down. The steering stem is, is a little bit of a press fit. Very rarely can you pull it out. So just support it from the bottom and give it a couple wraps here. like that until the bearing goes through and then you can take it all the way out. So there's that. We'll get back to that later. So two things happen with steering head bearings. One of them is that the races or the outer race just simply gets notched because the, the bearing is not rotating. You're just more or less always in a, more or less a straight line and so um, they tend to uh, get a little notch worn in so you can you can actually see the the notching on the bearing surface in there so that's part of what happens the other thing is that the grease gets stiff and that's the case on this bike too because I can feel when I try to rotate the bearing it's like this the grease is all hardened and it's essentially you can imagine the grease gets hard it forms like a even like a little ramp underneath the, the roller and uh, causes notchiness and makes it uh, difficult to ride in a straight line um, precisely and also it uh, just overall affects the handling in a negative way. So that's why we replace these guys. And um, this one has both sim syndromes occurring. So it's a good thing we're doing this. So it's, this is a fairly lengthy process and uh, a little bit longer than we can do in one video. So we basically covered the disassembly. Um, when we come back to this, we're going to show you how to remove the bearings and reinstall new ones, and then we'll start putting things back together. And uh, th it, it'll, it'll be interesting. In any case, uh, once again, thanks a lot for watching our video, and check out our website at boxer2valve.com, and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, join our newsletter, Keep in, we'd like to keep you informed with all the cool new things we have for your two-valve BMW motorcycle. And uh, look forward to the next video. See you soon.